In this tutorial, I will show you how to connect a basic Angular app to an Express server via HTTP requests. The first link in the description will show you how the Express server was created. If you just want to follow this tutorial, you can clone the Soka4 repository from my GitHub. Link for that and the repository of the final project is in the description. If you have cloned the Express server, you need to install all npm packages that the project needs. To do so, enter npm install in the terminal and press enter. When the command has run, a node modules folder should appear. Start the server using the nodemon script with npm run server. We will need to make some changes to the server. Once we do that, nodemon will automatically restart it. Okay, now we can start the actual Angular part. For this, I will create a new project using the Angular CLI. If you don't know how to do this, check out the second link in the description. Switch the terminal to the project folder and start the new Angular app using ng-surf open. The example page will open in your default browser. I remove all the example code and put in a hello there for now. As you can see, the changes are reflected once I save. So what do we need to connect this app to our Express server? The first thing would be some kind of UI, so we can press a button to send a request to the server. For this, we will create three buttons in the app.component.html file. The next thing we need to do is to react to the button presses. We will do that by creating three corresponding functions in the app.component.ts file. The last thing we need is the connection to our Express server. We will handle this connection with a service, which each of our functions will call to talk to the server. Unlike the other two files, the service file doesn't exist yet, so we have to create it. By opening a new terminal, switching to the project folder and entering ngs crud, as I said. All the functions which we will create in our app.component.ts will need this service to talk to our server. So we make the service available by injecting it in the component. We do this by importing the service and then adding it to the constructor. But right now, our service can't actually talk to our Express server. For this, we need to provide a HTTP client in the app.config.ts. This is specific for standalone components, which Angular 17 creates by default. If you are using a previous Angular version or you told the CLI to create a non-standalone component, you will have to provide the HTTP client in your app.modules.ts file. Now we can start to write some code in our crud.service.ts file. The first thing we should do here is put our server address in a variable. Then we create the getAll function, which has an observable as a return value and uses the HTTP client. Both are not available right now. The observable can be added via quick fix. For the HTTP client, we have to import it and then add it to the constructor. The getAll function just returns whatever the HTTP client gets from our base server URL. If we go to our Express server, we can see that this should be a comma-separated cantrip list. In our component, we create the getItems function, which uses the getAll function the CRUD service provides. Once we receive data from the server, we log it to the console. We have our service connection and we have the function our get button has to call. All we are missing now is the actual button. Open the app.component.html and add a simple button which calls our get items function. Now surely there can nothing go wrong, but just in case, open the dev tools by hitting F12 and switch to the console tab. And of course something did go wrong. I will link a video in the description about what the cross-origin or course error actually is, but here I will just show you how to fix it. Open a new terminal and switch to the projects folder of the Express server. Install course by typing npm install course, then import and use course in the server.js file. Let's clear the console and try again. Apparently, Angular is expecting a JSON object, so we change the value Express is responding with to an object. When we click the button again, it finally works. There's just no data to get yet. As the next step, we will add the ability to send data to the server. We will start by adding a post data function to the CRUD service. This function looks very similar to the get all function, but there are some differences. First of all, the HTTP client this time calls the post function. 
Also, the route is not the base URL, but cantrip this time. Finally, the post function has a second parameter to send data to the server. After we are done in the service, we go to the component. Here, we add some example data. Then, under the get items function, we add the send data function, which uses the post data function we have just created inside the service. We add the example data as a parameter of the post data function. Once we are done in the component, we switch to the template, by which I mean the app.component.html file. Here, we add a simple send data button. Let's test our new button. No errors so far. If everything has worked, the get items button should now return the cantrip we have just sent to the server. And everything has worked as expected. Isn't that nice for a change? The last thing we will add is the ability to delete a cantrip. Back in the service, we add the delete data function. This function gets the name of the cantrip to delete as a parameter and uses it for the last part of the delete route. We navigate back to the app.component.ts and prepare a string with the name of the cantrip we want to delete. After that, we scroll down under the send data function and we add the delete data function, which gets the cantrip to delete as a parameter. And finally, we open the template and add the delete button. Once we save, the delete button appears. Let's test it. So we get another error. But the delete operation did actually happen. The Express server we created in the last tutorial just does not return proper HTML status codes. To fix this, open the server.js file and add status code 200 for successful deletions and status code 404 for when the cantrip is not present on the server. When we save the server, Nodemon will restart it. So for the final test, we can send a cantrip to the server, get one cantrip from the server, delete the cantrip, try to get the cantrip again, which will yield no result. And finally, we can try to delete the cantrip again, which will result in the 404 error. Happy coding!